The Charlotte Hornets lose another one, this time to the Utah Jazz. But are we happier with this performance compared to the last two before that? We'll talk about that today on Locked On Hornets. You are Locked On Hornets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. In a minute, cuz, we live. We live. We live. <laughs> It's Locked On Hornets. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, local experts on the number one daily sports podcast network. Thanks for making Locked On Hornets your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Thanks to Truebill. This episode's brought to you by Truebill. It's the new app that saves you money by helping you identify and stop paying for the subscriptions you don't want or need. They can even negotiate better deals on those you want to keep. Follow us on Twitter. I'm on Twitter at Walker Mail. Doug's on Twitter at Doug Branson, L-O-H. And the show handles on Twitter at Locked On Hornets. You can also check us out on YouTube with that title as well, Locked On Hornets. Doug, are you happy with the defense yesterday? Are you happy with LaMelo Ball after we got destroyed in the YouTube comments? They're ruthless, man. The ball I stands listen. are out there. How are you feeling about everything that you experienced yesterday? I told you last week, they can't wound me. I lived through the Jeremy Lin <laughs> era, and I've been called every name in the book. Okay, you can't hurt me. I'm just calling it mm -hmm. like I see it. And as I call it like I see it, if I see improvement, I will I will say that as well. And I thought I saw some serious improvement from Ball. And we've seen moments where we, we know he can lock in on defense. He's not incapable of playing defense. We know that. I was just commenting on the last show about needing to just see leadership across the board from everyone, including, and I think – especially LaMelo Ball. Look, if you're going to get the write-up in Sports Illustrated, if you're going to get all the attention, you have to take some of the criticism that comes uh, along the way for the team as well. And when the team is playing poorly, you have to take some of that on. But I was happy, obviously, that they rallied. And, you know, look, I mean, for the, for the first – I've got props today. For the first half, I was still wearing the black hat. And then – in the fourth quarter, they started to rally. Mason Plumley making plays, LaMelo Ball hitting threes. Terry Rozier, 14 points in the fourth quarter. I started to feel okay. the Christmas spirit. I started to feel it. And then Bogdan Bogdanovich hits the three, ah, puts him up. Hat. Puts Stop him up your uh, six at that point, and it was over. Take better care of your hats. It's the second time. I didn't even realize, by the way, until I watched it back, that you threw your hats. Because what my setup is, is that obviously I have – our exchange open on one tab and then I have to look at the stats and other things on the other tab. I don't have the professional setup so you can kind of see me. You've got a better view of mm -hmm. everything that's going on. I am just working with one screen. So I don't even see some of the crazy stuff you do half the time. I need that's why I always have to go back and watch it and then just maybe comment it on to the next show. But Walker, I'm not happy because this is the same story we've seen over and over from the Hornets during this little period of they've got everyone back, but now they're starting games lackadaisically. They're not they're not scoring uh, early in games now, which is really weird. I mean, they've been one of the top offenses, but the three point shot has gone away from several players, including Terry Rozier. I mentioned 14 points in in the uh, second half. Uh, but 20 points overall, he was not very good in the first quarter, and they're getting off to these slow offensive starts, which leaks into their defense, and they, they just find themselves at the beginning of these games down 20 all of a sudden before we even get to halftime, and they're just digging, digging, digging. They were resilient in this one, but you know, not enough. It's a, it's a really good Utah Jazz team who, by the way, wasn't shooting well in this game either. That's the this was thing. an opportunity. That's, yeah. what's, that's what's so disappointing. This was an opportunity for the Hornets. And to their credit, it's because the defense was a lot better. Now, we can get into LaMelo Ball stuff. Like, look, man, it wasn't LaMelo Ball that lost in this game. He was good last night. No, he was great. So, still some defensive breakdowns. Who, uh, who who doesn't have them? You know, like Kelly Oubre, there's still some things. But also, we know that the Jazz are a really good offensive team. I thought the defensive effort was a lot better last night. And you can actually credit them. Some of the shots were just open, and the Hornets got lucky that the Jazz mm -hmm. missed some open shots. But the effort was way more there than it had been the previous two games. And I think after you suffer multiple contests like that, I think that's the reason why you saw a kick in the pants a little bit for the Charlotte Hornets. You mentioned resiliency. Got that from Terry Rozier. Got that from LaMelo Ball last night. That was fun. 
we had moments of fun Hornets basketball at the end where it made you switch hats before the Jazz took that lead right back. As soon as it was 92-91, Kelly Oubre carrying the ball, little Euro step action, dunk it, one point lead immediately on the other end. Mike Conley is the one that hits the and one, gets that lead back. LaMelo tries to keep him in it, like had some nice threes at the end of this game. Was pretty fun to watch him. Um, but the Jazz just hitting too much. And eventually you would fall and lose this game to a team that didn't shoot well. You know, Brad Rowland, Locked On Podcast Network's very own, he tweeted a picture of the Jazz box score, seeing. O'Neal go one of nine, and the one shot he hit was at the very, very end. So it basically O of eight the entire game. You see Gobert go four of ten. Gobert at forty percent. That's huge for the Hornets. You think that would be a option? It's nice. They just couldn't. They just couldn't stop fouling him. Yeah, I mean, it was fifteen true. of sixteen from the line, so he gets twenty three points, even though he's four that's of the ten difference. from the field. That's that's probably the difference. Rudy Gay goes two of eleven. You know, Donovan Mitchell seven of twenty, two of ten from three point land. At Ingles is only two of seven. Brad Rowland takes a screenshot of that box score and said, the Jazz won this game by double digits. Not necessarily indicative after the Hornets came back, but it, as you mentioned, resilient, and yet the Jazz, they were able to win. Hornets couldn't capitalize. Yeah, let me just give some props to a few Hornets that we saw play well last night. I thought um, we mentioned LaMelo Ball, 8 of 20 from the field, 21 points, 11 assists, 6 rebounds. You're going to take that box score line every day and twice on Sunday. But Jalen McDaniels all over the place in this game. 6 of 8 from the field, 14 points, 5 rebounds, 2 blocks and a steal, big defensive plays. Uh, Kelly Oubre struggled from the field, but he had 3 steals in this game, and and I thought – I thought he had a block of a three-point shot. It's in zero blocks, but I, I could have sworn he blocked a three-point shot. Maybe I was looking at Jalen McDaniels. Um, and so I, I thought those, uh, just pointing out, and Mason Plumley had some big plays at the end of the game. I thought he got <laughs> killed by Rudy Gobert generally in the first half, uh, but did make some big plays down the stretch. And Mason Plumley, the only Hornets starter uh, that did not have a negative uh, plus-minus. It was a, a zero. Good, good job, Mason Plumley, especially at the end. I thought that tap in that he had, where he's just going all out for a rebound that he wasn't right. ever going to grab a hold of against Rudy Gobert. To me, he reminded me of the wacky flailing and in, arm inflatable flailing tube man going at the basketball, <laughs> just going like this. Boom! Hits the basketball and it goes in. And now I think that brought it within one point before Charlotte was able to take the lead on the next possession with Kelly Oubre's transition bucket. Uh, that hey, great job, Mason. Just go crazy to the bucket. Just just do crazy things and maybe it'll go in. And that's exactly what happened there. Again, it just didn't happen uh, for the Hornets in the end. Right. So I mean, the story of this game is the story of so many of these games recently, where they just get off the starter. It really because the bench I thought elevated them to a certain extent in this game, and they and the bench has come in and elevated the Hornets. But you need the starters to play a lot better. I'm going to hit you with a, this is a crazy number. Uh, I wanted to know what the starting lineup has been able to put together, the main starting lineup with Gordon Hayward. We should mention in this game against Utah, no Gordon Hayward, lower back discomfort. He was ruled out before the game. That's why you saw Kelly Oubre get the start. Um, but the, the main starting lineup over the past five games, so Terry, so LaMelo Ball, Rozier, Bridges, Plumlee, Hayward, uh, 22 minutes, an offensive rating of 84.8 and a defensive rating of 132.6. That's a net rating of negative 47.8. Say that um, lineup one more time. Who, who's the lineup putting that? That's home, the main lineup. That's yeah. the starting lineup. Oh. Lamella Ball, Terry Rozier, Mason Plumlee, Miles Bridges, and Gordon Hayward. Uh, in their in their past two games, so, offensive rating of 84.8 and defensive rating of 132.6. So the immediate question I think of is, what is it with P.J. inserted instead of Mason Plumley? I don't know if you have those numbers, but that's that's the one that you immediately go to. When we talk about changing starting lineups, when we see who's more important in that role anyway, we often go to P.J. because James Brego has had to go to that small lineup, but that's the one you think. Like, is Mason the guy that is, you know, allowing that lineup's numbers to be so poor. Yeah, I mean, PJ, so if I pull, if I zoom out a little bit and pull out to the last, uh, the last 10 games, uh, five player lineups, uh, you again see uh, the sort of Miles Bridges, Cody Martin, Nick Richards, Kelly Oubre Jr., Gordon Hayward, 30 minutes. That's a negative 16.8. Yeah. This lineup with PJ Washington. Cody Martin, Miles Bridges, Kelly Oubre Jr., Gordon Hayward, which we saw a okay. lot without LaMelo yeah. Ball. 
That uh, was a lot better defensively, 102.9. Right. Offensive rating of 114.9. That's a net rating of plus 12. And any positive at this point um, is is something because their defensive ratings have just been so bad. But if I look at the entire – I looked at some lineup data too from the entire season, Walker, and, and I mean it's pretty clear – that these starting lineups that they've thrown out for most of the year, so the main starting lineup uh, has a net rating of negative five over 205 minutes. Then the Ball, Bridges, Ubre Jr., Plumley, Hayward, it has a net rating of negative three, but it's a lot better defensively, 102.2 defensive rating. We know on the season it's around 114, 115. Uh, so that that's the lineup that I suggested in the last show that Kelly Oubre uh, gets subbed in for Terry Rozier. So that lineup we saw featured a lot when Terry Rozier was unavailable early in the season, and it played uh, not great defensively, but played better. It just didn't play well offensively. Yeah, I mean, and it's the man, the, the Terry Rozier, the defensive stuff with him. Like there, there are times where you can see him really get after it. I, I've just always not been and he did this last night I think with Donovan Mitchell you know there was this time where he he kind of olays the player allows them to get by pokes at the basketball from behind and it's just such a wild gamble that the risk is not worth it at all you might poke the basketball from behind but out of the nine out of ten times you don't you know then you're just giving up four on five and you're allowing that ISO to get in the paint we saw him do it a little last night real quickly did want to mention at least uh, we did see James Booknight minutes in this one. You know, 10 minutes for him. Did go one of three from the field. So just had a two-point bucket that he hit. I thought that there was a nice defensive sequence where he misses a floater but doesn't get discouraged, comes back on the other end, handles mm-hmm. Jordan Clarkson ISO very well, gets all the nice. way to the baseline, seals it off. And Clarkson, I don't know if it led to a turnover or maybe a timeout or something like that, but it was it was Clarkson essentially not being able to do anything with it. I thought that was a nice defensive sequence for a guy, a rookie, that has reason to be frustrated just from you know, never experiencing this type of stuff before, but the very next possession coming up with a positive play after a missed shot. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's just, it's positive just to see Book Knight get minutes, get yeah, run, right, get more experience, right, right. because I think that's going to really benefit them later in the season. And our, our guy David Walker mentioned this on Twitter, that he's, he's trying to deal with these kind of losses the best he can, knowing that that the schedule is going to ease up. I mean, they were they you know, they've been on these just brutal back-to-backs against against really good teams and the teams coming in have plenty of rest. And so th- that's going to ease up. And so really I think the Hornets are in hold, you know, hold on as long as they can and, and try to get through this period. Yeah, more road games than anybody by a decent amount, less home games than anybody by a couple games, something like that. It, it's been brutal. Borrego not using it as an excuse. It's going to ease up. Right. It, it, it still has to contribute, and I think there is. It's it's not it's not just an excuse. There is a solid foundation of reasoning behind, yeah. hey, that's tough for any NBA team. There's a reason that there are maybe a couple of losses here and there because of how brutal the schedule is. And that's why this game, I think, is important because, again, they got to figure out these starts to games, these first quarters. They've got to figure that out. There's no doubt about that, but they showed some fight, and that's what you mm-hmm. want to see. You, you, you may lose the game, but show some fight. Um, that that you know you just can't have any more of these just crazy blowouts where you just completely quit on defense. We needed to see that last night more than almost any other game this season. Right. I, I needed fight, and it, it, you hate it. It's like, hey, if we don't dig ourselves in the hole in the first place, then we could be happy about this even more so. I don't want to yeah. reward you for being right. bad the previous two games and not being as bad the next game, yet that is the positive feeling I come away with this. And it's weird. I shouldn't feel that way, but you know, <laughs> they did this to themselves by playing so poorly the first two games. But at least they found a way to fight against one of the better teams in the NBA. That's what happens. All right, thanks to Doug for hopping on with me the first segment. It's going to be Nick Carboni, WCNC, going to be joining me in just one moment. Let's discuss Truebill real quick. Nick Carboni subscribes to Truebill. Do you know why free trials renew without your consent? It's a business scam out to get you. Don't let greedy corporations pocket your money. Download Truebill instead to take control of your subscriptions. On average, people save up to $720 a year with Truebill because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel. Truebill makes it incredibly simple. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in just one tap. Truebill has over 2 million users and has helped save them over $100 million. Don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today 
at Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. Go right now, Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. It could save you thousands a year, Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. Also, Bet Online is somebody we appreciate partnering with us here on the Lockdown Hornets podcast. They have you covered all season for more props, odds, and lines than ever before as the football season does continue the march to the playoffs. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all the sports action this season. You can head to the new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today, and you can receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use the promo code Locked On to receive your bonus. From basketball, boxing, UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, it has it all. So don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet Online is the fastest and the easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet Online, where the game starts. Nick Carboni, join us next on the Lockdown Hornets podcast. (laughs) 